question marks are starting to get answered slowly here <laughs> as we see the new Hellraiser squad going up against the Polish team of Virtus Pro. And we are into map number two. We are live in the pistol round. So let's see if Virtus Pro can get a strong sight here on the uh, less favoured T side. Okay, Virtus Pro, a side who quite often just stand at the bottom of Banana like this, especially when Banana has been smoked. There is no smoke to speak of on this occasion, but they're just going to take it uh, slow. Try not to get naded by the CTs. You can see there was just a nade thrown, and that was going to be a smoke on Banana. So they just take it chill. We've got a pretty standard setup here from the CT side, but uh, some aggressive positioning there from Dozer getting some information, but it's going to be a five-man push straight into B, but uh, no frags yet. It's going to be Flamey first to go down, and it's going to be uh, Adren forced to rotate into construction to retake with the rest of his teammates, which should allow Virtus Pro to plant the bomb. Well, Ali initially faking the bomb plant there, by the looks of things, which was definitely interesting indeed, and that's actually going to allow time for the CT side of Hellraisers to push through there. Angel gets the headshot onto by Ali after the bomb is planted, but Snacks will respond. So it's a three-on-three -three situation. Kutcher getting the man advantage in favour of HR by taking out Nia with the headshot there, and in comes the push. Pasha, very, very low indeed. It doesn't matter for him, though. He will get one, eventually gets shut down, leaving Snacks the last man left alive. He's got that smoke covering him, and they know exactly where he is. And they have got a kit there in the hands of Kutcher. So in comes the push. He will get one, but the bomb's already been defused. Hellraisers with a successful successful sorry retake onto the B-bomb site, securing their first round here. There was a kind of a weird position on the B-bomb site there where Bayali was trying to plant it for barbecue, uh, or grill as it's more commonly known. But the problem was his teammate was here, just hiding in the kind of corner. So he actually had no cover what to speak of whatsoever from the banana area, That's which is why he went for the fake. Uh, just, just to be sure, because, again, if he starts to plant there, someone just emerges. No one's going to kill that guy. So that was a bit of an awkward moment there for Virtus Pro, which delayed the plant of the bomb. They did get the plant, though, which means they could probably buy it next round. You can see the buy is very light indeed on the T side here. So only a CZ and a flash for Pasha. A few P250s here and there, but not much going on on this eco. Pasha is going to hear Dozier try and get an angle on him, but Dozier going to be uh, someone who can shoot with an MP9. And they're only going to lose one player on that anti-eco. I believe that was actually a P90 that uh, Flamey had there. We know exactly what that gun can do when it just rips people apart. But Hellraiser successfully converting the anti-eco round there in round number two. And you were right, James, indeed. Virtus Pro, after managing to secure the bomb plant in round number one, they are going to get an early buy here in round number three. But this <coughs> is pretty crucial that they get a good round in here. They need to start to get themselves on the board and put a good T side down here because if not, their money's not going to be in a pretty state whatsoever. Okay, so nice team flashes on the T side there going for the kind of flash peak. And it's going to get one frag. The tray's going to come in and get the second one as well. So it's an early bomb site open for Virtus Pro starting to rush. The B players now overwhelm them with the numbers and only two CTs remain and those are running around with an MP9 not going to be as powerful now as it was in the previous round. So not sure if he didn't expect the buy from Virtus Pro or what, but uh, that MP9 is going to be almost useless versus the armoured opponents here. Three versus two now, one man at deficit, and uh, looks like they're just going to play for the exits here, not go against these uh, numbers of Virtus Pro. I think that's a good decision. Uh, obviously, money is something very, very important in these early rounds, so they need to try and hold on to those rifles. Snacks is going to get grenaded there by Dossier just at the end, so one player on each squad will be left alive, but Virtus Pro come out the victors in round number three. And let's have a look at the money for Hellraisers. Unfortunately, it's not really sitting pretty for them whatsoever. Dossier does have around about 6.7k, so we'll see if he is going to decide to drop. I have a feeling that their money is so low that they're not going to really bother, or are they going to switch things up? No, it actually looks like they are going to force things up. It's quite, it's quite a weird situation for them because yeah. uh, Adren had 1,400 at the beginning of that round and Flamey had 2,100, I mm. want to say. So it's they can just about spread out a semblance of a buy. They've managed to get four primary rifles, which is going to be very important, and four smokes as well. So they can still burn down the clock here for versus Pro. That's going to be the first one. Pasha going to try and punish, but not going to get the right angle there. Going to shoot the other side of the wall. Bayali going to get a little bit of a spray on Kucha in mid. But again, Hellraisers need to abuse the clock more in this round than any other round so far. Not that, it, not that it's been that many. Purely because, uh, look at the money on their team. They do not want Versus Pro to start to get some momentum here. 
Bomb is stacked up over towards A by the looks of things. And Neo's going to make his way down towards Banana to concentrate his focus over onto mid as well with the rest of his team. Smoke grenades go in and it looks like the push could be going in, in towards the A bomb site here. Yes, it is. And they've left Arch open here by the looks of things. Neo will get one, but Kutcher responds with two before eventually being taken out by Bialy. Doshia does get one there in pit before being taken out himself, which lands things in a two versus two situation. Bali will come out the winner there against the Dren, leaving Flamey the last one left alive. He is going to go for this retake because it's only a one versus two situation here. Taz knocked down a 61 HP. He's got to try and just force this into two one versus one situations. He's going to get caught. He's going to get knocked down to 24 HP here. And it looks like he's still going to attempt the retake. You can see he's just paranoid about the trade kill. He knows there's two of them alive. So he's looking for the second person to pop out here. He knows where one is. But you can see he's just trying to bait now. But he's only got two bullets left in the clip as he starts to push. And going to get taken out by Taz with assistance from his teammate by Ali. So great play there by Versus Pro. You can see as the bomb was being planted, Flamey was aiming his gun. Uh, over towards pit. He wanted to see after plant if uh, that player was going to try and get a position in the pit area. Didn't go there, so uh, I think he kind of eliminate, eliminated that or put put the percentage of someone being there as a bit lower, at least on the left hand side. But again, after m not managing to get the early frag on the player he spotted on the site, he moved back to uh, try and guard himself from there. So he's in a 1v1 if someone tries to peek for a trade kill. Nobody picked as well because obviously Virtus Pro know this. So great play by both teams, and it's going to be Virtus Pro coming out on top, forcing Hellraisers onto the eco. Well, I know it's only round number five, but so far from what we've seen from Virtus Pro, they're starting to look a bit better on the T side than they were on Dust Two already, securing the amount of rounds that they actually got on the T side of Dust Two in the entire first half. And they've punished Hellraisers by winning two rounds in a row, which is going to force Hellraisers down onto an eco once again. Worth mentioning as well, Virtus Pro are making the right decisions here. You can see rather than put all the bodies up and on, they threw the Molotovs up to clear the area to make sure there aren't any people close up like this with a P250 or a CZ or a 5.7 even. You know what damage they can do close up. Pasha peeking with a nade in his hand. But uh, I think he knew he made a mistake there and quickly got behind the wall. Going to be four versus two. See if Hellraisers can pick up the one rifle which has been downed. Um, I think they might be looking for it. So next is a player lacking a rifle. Um, in this kind of situation, when you lose a player, you may want to throw it up. You can see the AK here. You can see him jumping to try and get it. <laughs> Often when you're on, you're on the uh, anti-eco here, you just pick up the rifle, throw it over here if somebody goes down, stop him picking it up. But so Dren desperately trying to reach from that AK, but uh, it's over here, bro. I think it's too far away for you to grab. I think he was trying to shoot it, actually, with his P250 there to see if he could knock it any closer to him. Yeah, you can see him trying to do it now. He's trying to shoot it so he can get it. He knows exactly where it is. And, of course, because he's firing shots down range, he's going to get caught out here. Taz punishes him with the headshot to secure round number three for Verdus Pro. And after only six rounds played, they've got more rounds on the T half here on Inferno than, the, than they did uh, in the entire first half of Dust 2. Indeed. Now, Pasha going straight for the big green gun. None to be seen on Hellraisers, but I doubt they have the money for it. As Look how limited they are on grenades here. Again, you can see how important smokes are for the Hellraisers team. Smokes and flashes, four of each. First one going down. Angel going to throw it over to the banana area. So that's going to give them control of banana for most of the round. And that's going to be important, again, because they are so lacking in money. It's going to make life a little bit easier for them. They've gone for the three-man uh, push towards B. You can see Flamey coming for support. And that's going to mean they're quite limited on the A side, but that smoke in apps is going to slow down Virtus Pro, though they pretty much have control of mid. See Pasha just creeping with the AWP now. This is when he gets dangerous. When he starts to creep like this and you can just see him start to beat those corners, start to try and get some information. This is when Pasha, I, I think, in my opinion, really starts to come into his own here. So he's going to find a player there through the smoke on Arch. That HE grenade will not land, but the bomb's making its way up towards Banana. Indeed, and it's very important to note Dozier's positioning behind the truck there. He's not just peaking 24-7. He's holding an angle where he emerges every so often. You can see the rotation coming in now. Looks like a fake has potentially been sold by Virtus Pro as Pasha takes down Kucha while he tries to rotate and changes his mind. That's going to slow down the CTs going towards the B bomb site as well. In the meantime, Neo is applying pressure over there, so Hellraiser's not really sure what's going on as there are 20 seconds left. They've spotted a bomb now. This is going to cause the rotation for the remainder of the CTs, and uh, only Neo is going to be left so started well for Virtus Pro sold the fake CT started to rotate one got taken out and that stopped them from rotating all the way to B 
came back to A, bombs down, Neo's the last man standing all of a sudden. So things have flipped around very, very quickly. This is why I love CSGO. Another reason why I made the switch to it, because things like that can just change and the flip of a coin. Virtus Pro looked like they had complete command in control of the A bomb site there, and then suddenly, especially to point him out again, Flamey, who went big in the CT side of Dust 2, he got a couple of crucial frags and uh, switch the favour inside of the CTs here to secure the third round. So all things are even as we go into round number seven, and we've got the double orc play, but it's one for Kutcher and one for Passion. Let's see who comes out on top. As you can see, it went for a peek there. Counter flash is coming in already, and he's not going to re-peek it. He knows better than that. Pasha is going to be going towards A this time, so uh, unpredictable on the T side. But again, back to when he was aiming at the truck, and uh, well, to Pit and Dozy was standing behind the truck. They know Pash is going to have an orb, so they don't want to just stand on an angle like this 24-7 and give him the pick, which he's going to get on a dread. Ideally, they want to uh, peak every so often to make it less predictable as to where they are. And uh, with the right timing, Pasha may try to clear a corner when they're not peaking. Then they may peak while he's looking somewhere else and get the jump on him, which is the entire idea behind uh, that peaking theory. Now... They're maybe expecting the CTs to rotate the man over towards B, but uh, you can see they've been very quiet around B, and they're starting to rotate now. As they're getting close, they're all walking. So uh, I think they're banking on one player being on the B bomb site, and the remainder being towards A as these smoke comes in for CT, and it's going to be a four-man push here from versus Pro. Max is going to be able to get taken down there, actually, over by Angel on the A bomb site there. So he was lurking, and he got taken down. But over on the B bomb site, as we can see, Virtus Pro has successfully been able to get the bomb down. So they did get a good read, noticing that three players were over towards A. So they only needed to take down one to get themselves control of the smaller B bomb site. In comes the push, though, from the CTs. Kutcher still does that, have that up, as does Pasha as well. And Taz over towards construction. He's going to find one, but he misses the shot and gets punished for it. And Bali is very, very low himself indeed so he's got to be extremely careful but the clock is ticking here passion with a lovely shot onto angel hellraisers can't actually oh. win this anymore because they don't have a kit i think hellraiser i think angel and dozier the idea was to try and keep virtus pro on the bomb site so they all die and they all will die indeed but i don't think hellraisers wanted to die at the same time i just think they were trying to ruin versus pro's money even if they win the round by keeping them on the site and making them all fall to that explosion so they were kind of halfway there is actually Hellraiser's pick. So if it's their pick, they've not only got to feel confident in their own abilities, they've got to feel confident enough that they can overpower a squad like Virtus Pro, which, as we should all know, are strong on a map like Inferno. So, you know, that's just something to keep in your back of your mind here. Indeed. The last map, though, is Mirage, which is another map that uh, Virtus Pro are quite dangerous on. I love so seeing them on Mirage. Indeed. So nice crossfire setup here on this eco, but passive movements. Wow, we've got four people on the B site, in fact. And this is good because if, if uh, sometimes the general ethos is if one or two people die on this uh, eco, on the CT side, like you see this push coming out now, then they may think that the uh, bomb site is clear. But Neo cleaning out three players here. Those are the only person on the A site going to get a frag as well on by Ali, but uh, I expect he should be overrun quite soon. That said, we have two rifles now for the Hellraiser side. They have options. Adren's got a rifle. He's got a Galil, but he's got seven HP. So it's quite likely... That Adren goes for a save here, uh, but now Dozy is dead. The save is the only option for him. Yeah, well, he did get caught out there. It was Taz actually lurking around. He came through the stairs from a second mid in towards Zap and snuck like a sneaky beaver into there and took out Dossier from behind. So the bomb was successfully planted, and now the T's are going to try and go hunting for that last player. But Adren here over in T-Apps isn't going to be found by the looks of things. So he will we'll be able to keep that Galil, and uh, it'll be 5-3 in favour of Virtus Pro. This is actually my, my where I normally go when I'm trying to save, uh, because it gives you long passages to two ways where you can get... Uh, someone can come try and look for you. And the other way has an audio cue from the door. So you can quickly peek one way and quickly peek the other way. Uh, same like the entrance to Mirage apps from the T side as well. It's another place where you can kind of peek two angles and you know pop out and take someone by surprise with the peeker's advantage that you do have in Counter Strike. The money's really not sitting pretty on both teams here. It is really back and forth. Let's have a look at it. It's, I mean, it's back and forth. Like any team who's going to lose here and, and, and getting themselves in a tricky situation could be forced down onto Nico pretty quickly. But this is going to be really aggressive player over towards Banana, and they found the bomb. Wow. Yeah, this is a war of attrition here for both teams, and that normally makes for a good game when uh, both teams have quite limited economy. 
got the nades coming in from the few remaining Virtus Pro players here, Neo and Snacks. Now let's see if they can get a bomb plant, because that will make all the difference for them. Nade coming in to clear out a new box, but they still have a one-man disadvantage. And Angel is in a strong position to um, cause problems for the bomb plants here. They are going to go for it anyway, and I think they're going to get it down. So that's going to be an $800 bonus per person, even if they lose the round following the plant of that bomb. Three versus one, Snacks. Only one remaining for Virtus Pro. Does have an AK though. All he needs to do is pop a few faces. But it's going to be Hellraiser's round. And uh, that bomb plant may allow Virtus Pro to buy in the next round where they otherwise may not have been able to. Yeah, so just trying to help out their economy there. And they were left in a two versus three situation. So uh, knowing the Virtus Pro squad, they looked like they were actually in a pretty good situation. But uh, unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Hellraiser's managing to secure their fourth round on the board here. So only one round between the two squads. One thing I just want to quickly note is you saw at the end of that round, Kucha was running up and down Banana looking at a bunch of AKs. Oh. And he's probably communica communicating to his team, do you want me to pick up an AK? Um, three of them survived, only one had an AK at the end of the round, so it looks like they're going to opt for stealth as opposed to one tap to the face here on the CT side. So definitely uh, whether or not you choose an AK on certain maps depends on the style you are playing on CT. And we go into round number 10, it will be, and it's going to be a pretty awkward force by here by the looks of things. Today. So they have got quite a few grenades, but uh, only two uh, tech nines is actually the name of the game there and they're all going to get shut down here as it is going to be left in a four on two situation the bombs in the mid of the second out they go over towards our side by the looks of things actually they smoked that up but Kutcher is going to find Bayali there to leave snacks once again the last one left arrived this time he's in a one versus four situation Angel knocked down to only 14 points of health and he's going to just see if he can take down any players as he is eventually going to get taken out here by the looks of things or is he finds one and there we go Kutcher and they eventually able to uh, stick him to the ground and that's going to be all even here 5-5 five, five. but let's not forget that Furnace Pro are on the less favoured side here on Inferno. Indeed and they're definitely going to be happy with 50% of the rounds in the uh, first two thirds of this map. You can see Barney with a funky bayonet marble fade there. Looks nice. Looks like someone threw a bunch of buckets at the knife. You're not a, fa you're not a fan of the knife. I don't know it looks fade. a bit crazy. It's a bit over the it top. It looks like a bruise. Ooh, Kucha with a fantastic angle on the Virtus Pro players as they push up on this eco. That's going to be only two remaining, so it's going to be a bunch of money in the bank there for Kucha, Bayali and Pasha. Uh, Bayali's picked up an M4, actually. He is the only one remaining trying to get that reload in. But uh, Hellraiser's only, lose, only losing one player is going to be fantastic for their CT economy, which has finally got off the ground here um, as we go into the last third of this first half. Once again, Virtus Pro, by the looks of things, with no money in the bank, are going to be forced down to an eco. So, uh, Armour and Scout is going to be the name of the game for Pasha. And Kutcher, once again, has got the big green gun in his hands on the CT side of things here. So, Hellraisers, uh, they let Virtus Pro start to run a bit ragged on them, and actually, in some ways, it was close. But Virtus Pro were looking a lot stronger on the T side on this map than they were earlier on Dust 2. But still, hey, Hellraisers still standing strong here. And, uh, you know, knowing what the Hellraisers squad were like, before this roster change, um, you know, how are you comparing what you've seen from them so far in this game compared to what they used to be like? Um, well, I think they're, le they're less reliant on any one person as they were on Simple in the previous um, lineup. And he, he's a person who could entirely just clean up like four people on his own. Yeah. So I like it in that respect. Still early days. Dust 2 looks really good, very aggressive and dynamic. We'll have to see how they continue. We will see how they continue as Pasha gets the entry frag here into round number 12. And in comes the push from the team onto the A bomb site. In comes the rotation as well as Angel will respond to even things up. But Pasha once again with another headshot. That's the second kill for him with the scout. Neo's going to come in with the overpower knife. tech nine. Knife fight's going down in pit and Neo's going to completely disrupt that and disturb their game as he will manage to get that kill with the Tech-9 in hand. So it's three versus two. All three players from Virtus Pro are low, though. Uh, sorry, four versus two, even. I do apologize there. Taz knocked down to two HP, but they have got the bomb down here, which is really the name of the game on an eco round. Okay, so Kutcher looking for that connection, and it's another situation where they just want to fast pick and then get out of there. Look at the health on Virtus Pro. Taz, two HP. Bali, eight HP. Pasha, 24 HP. So lots of players uh, quite low tagged, but two-man retake isn't going to be the order of the day here and they are hunting them down like wild dogs let's have a look see if they can find him Kucha running for dear life now doesn't manage oh. to get the pick fast enough he just gets wreck nine in the face that's got to hurt 
Yeah, that's got to hurt, and it certainly hurt his economy as he's down to 1.4k. So they are going to force it up by the looks of things. Angel's got about 7k, so they are going to be able to drop for their teammates here, and they're actually going to get an AWP in the hands of Kutcher here once again. So let's see if he can do damage with it instead of getting uh, wrecked in the face with that Tech 9 as we saw at the end there. But we are all even. 6-6 six, six is the score as we go into round number 13. And Pasha has finally got his AWP in hand. He did some great entry fragging work there with that scout in the last round, which really allowed his team to push onto that A-bomb site. But Kutcher will start things off here in round number 13 with the entry frag onto Snacks. Good start for the CT side there. You can see Kutcher again. He isn't the simple. He's not going for the kind of aggressive peaks down mid. Uh, quick on the trigger, trigger finger fibers there. He's going for the more passive position. And will punish the peaks from the opposing side. So, good decision making there because I feel like if he was going for a kind of the kind of simple orping side, it wouldn't be the right one for him. So, uh, that's great to see from Hellraisers. And Denier going to push a smoke solo and uh, not going to work out for him really. Not much else to say there as uh, it doesn't have any teammates with him for support. Taz is. I don't know what Taz is doing right now. No, I didn't quite know what he was doing now. I hope it's, ah, it's Taz, no more connection. It is, issues, of course. But He's downloading Polish. Oh. He's downloading Polish recipes. I was going to say that's a crazy ping. Taz has got to start to sort that out, though, and you've got to wonder how much of a factor that is going to play into the long run of this game. But back into the round, we've got 23 seconds left to go. Things are going to continue as it is left in a four versus two situation. Flame, as we can see here, just towards CT Arch, isn't going to find a play, and he's going to back his way over towards B just to split things up. So there will be two CT players on A and two CT players on B. But because of the situation with Taz, where as you can see he's hugging that wall and, and uh, enjoying that. He's not going to be able to move whatsoever. So I'm not too sure if this round will be replayed if Taz does have to disconnect. But uh, as expected, unfortunately, we are going to have another pause here. Okay, so in you this match, we do have the buy coming up for both teams. Going to be an AWP on Kucha again and an AWP on Pasha Biceps. So we'll see how these uh, dictate the flow of this match. In we go into round number 14 then, as you do say, two rounds left in this first half. And they're getting pretty aggressive on Banana here. Taz is going to find one, and that new IP is going to help him with a lovely headshot there. But he does get taken out straight away by Flamey responding to even things up into a four-on-four -four situation. A lot of emphasis is going down here on towards Banana, as we can see that bomb's over there. And it's just, I believe that actually will be Snacks lurking in mid over towards the A-bomb site. The CTs have split up though, so we can see that it will be Angel and Flamey over towards B. And now actually Kutcher making the decision to go towards CT spawn. Is he going to make his full rotation over towards B though? I'm not too sure. It looks like he will. If you were worried about why Neo was facing the wall there, it's because he's just looking away in case uh, CT flashes come in. And you can see Ooh. Angel's barrel just gave his position away there. Always got to be careful when you've got silenced them fours. Got to poke it into the wall just a little bit so that does not happen. And that's going to uh, give Virtus Pro the bomb site. There is, however, one player loitering in construction. That's going to be Kucha. He is going to try and get out of there, but uh, the smoke has dissipated now. So Pasha is going to find his arm before Kucha can see anything. Dozy is going to be forced to save. Going to just walk past that chicken and go and inspect the coop, and uh, that's really important for Hel for versus Pro. Sorry, you can see their money is quite lacking to say the least right now. They're going to survive with four players, so it's going to be uh, a bunch of cash. And again, yesterday we saw somebody hiding in this position, and they just got straight shot through the box, which was quite interesting. One thing that I've got to point out here, and it's a thing that I like to watch with Virtus Pro, and that I like, I mean, obviously, I don't like players playing bad, but Snacks, I believe, at the second out of the 14 rounds that has been played, he's only got three kills. Yeah, we can see that on there. But this is what I love about Virtus Pro is that even for the most part, when you have a player like Snacks who's not exactly performing up to his best ability, the rest of the squad can put together a good performance as a team to secure the rounds. And evidently, they're doing well here because the score is 7 7 and they are on the less favoured side here. So that's one thing that I've always really liked about Virtus Pro. Okay, so we've got flashes coming in from both teams as they battle for control of Banana. But have a look at this. We've got three players. Oh, this could be catastrophe. A, cast a catastrophe for Virtus Pro there. And indeed it is as uh, two players get taken out trying to hide in the smoke by the tree. Only Taz and Bali left. They have been well and truly wiped out by the Hellraisers team in the last round of the first half here. Going to have to try and push mid together if they choose to. 
I'm going to be paranoid about people in various positions here. This is going to be hard, um, if not impossible, for Virtus Pro to come out on top in this round. Aggressive positioning as well on Banana for Hellraiser's Angel at the tree with Adren for the bait position. Let's see who finds who first. Well, in comes the push, and Angel will get one. Bayali does respond onto him and actually gets a second headshot with the M4 there. So he's going to be able to make his way over towards the B-bomb site, but it's going to be a very quick rotation indeed. And that's going to be Flamey, who will be just the other side there. He's going to be able to get the bomb plant, or is he not? He fakes it, actually, initially. He tries to move himself into another one-versus-one situation. But as you can see, those little blue dots are making their way over towards the A-bomb uh, Sorry, the B-bomb site here. Kutcher will ensure the final kill there. No bomb plant, no round win for Virtus Pro. And Hellraisers, the team with a one-map advantage, will give themselves a one-round advantage as we go into the second half here of Inferno. Okay, and it seems we are about to get back into it. So, we'll see. And again, I mean, this is a, a huge a huge half here for Virtus Pro. They've got seven rounds on the T side. And we, I am fully expecting a strong CT half from them as well. So we'll see how things go. If Hellraiser's manage to win this pistol, though, they could take a four-round advantage if they manage to not get anti ecoed by the Polish side. Time will tell. That is a very nice knife. I think I think the Rust Coast is one of the nicer... Do you like it? Nice I, see, skins. personally, I'm not a fan. I think it's pretty cool. But we'll have to get back to skins later as uh, Snacks is all business right now. Taking down Dozier on Banana. We've got a two-man push as well, but Flamey's going to um, stop Snacks and Neo going to get revenge. So Virtus Pro still in control of, bomb, of both bomb sites for the time being. Two, sorry, one-man advantage. Neo does have a smoke and a flash as well, so he can try and slow down this advance. He is in an aggressive position, however. But uh, that should give him some time. You can see he's going to use that aggressive uh, view to potentially smoke things off, but he does not detect running, so going to be a delay as delayed as possible with uh, that smoke. You can see the counter flashes and nades coming in for Neo here. That's going to give him a two-man adva two advantage. It's only Angel and Kucha remain. I mean, obviously, we can see more on the screen with X-ray mode and with the, uh, the map as well than what uh, the players can see, but Hellraisers, if they had made an aggressive push-up B there, they would have actually only found one player before Pasha actually started to rotate. So it also is all going to be left up to uh, Kucha here in a one versus three situation. Two players are very low though, so don't get me wrong, he can still do this. He knows exactly where Bialy is, but they are going to get that crossfire set up and they've got the bomb there as well. And with only 18 seconds left on the clock, Kucha is going to get found out coming from construction and we will stop him in his tracks. Body led on the floor there to secure Virtus Pro's eighth round and that was really important for them to win that and uh, that's going to even things up here. Snacks favouring the Mag 7 once again. Quite curious to see where he's going to take it. Looks like Banana. Banana is a, a place where you can, on a force buy, try and make use of a Mag 7 around the corner by the car, but not something you see as often as you used to. And uh, I'm so tempted to press the button and follow that smoke, <laughs> but I know what's going to happen, no, guys. Do I'm not, not going to press it, not even once today. It is tempting because it looks so cool, but it's just not worth it in the end. I it actually stuck. got abuse on Twitter yesterday. Did you actually? For getting it st stuck so many times. It's not my fault, it's buggy, guys. I didn't make this game, damn it. <laughs> yeah, it is annoying. It's such a cool feature. Hopefully, it gets uh, fixed soon enough. Yeah. I, remember. I mean, if we didn't have that for Guardian Smoke on Mirage, we may have never known about that. Yeah. And that was That's beautiful true. to watch. It That's was true. Amazing. Exactly. To see the sheer, the sheer velocity of the throw as well, like, it's crazy. But. We're not in Mirage right now. We are on Inferno, and it is 8-8 eight eight here. Hellraiser's versus, versus versus Pro. Almost a bit of a tongue twister. VP on the CT side after taking that pistol now. Here comes the push as Pasha opens things up in round number 70. That's the entry frag onto Doshia, but they've actually let go of Arch Control initially by the looks of things, and Flamey's going to punish them for that as he takes down Pasha there to get the revenge kill. Taz is going to be able to pick up one, but Ali picks up another as well, and Flamey running gets Taz there with his P250, and they've actually got control of the A-bomb site, enough to be able to plant the bomb. The retake should come in here, as they are going to get both taken down there, so they will get the defuse here, Virtus Pro, but that was a pretty interesting round there, James, because they managed to actually wrap around Arch onto way and get the bomb down, despite the fact that Virtus Pro seemed to have relative good control. Indeed, indeed, they had a, had a split on the Arch area, basically, where one went towards library and died reasonably fast as his teammate jumped around the corner into CT spawn, which uh, allowed him to get some shenanigans going and eventually plant the bomb. It's going to be a one-round advantage, though, versus Pro and Hellraiser is going to find themselves on their final eco here. 
Let's have a look at the money they have in the bank right now. They should be uh, reasonably flush going into the next round, but this is not a guaranteed round for Virtus Pro. They need to kill all of these players. And uh, Flamey throwing the one nade that they had, which isn't going to get any damage done. Versus Pro in control of Banana, which is going to make life easier, especially versus an anti-eco. You can see they do have that uh, P90 ready to wipe out the T team on Banana as well. So we'll see how things go. Neo has one smoke, so he can re-smoke Banana. And so much time being wasted here for Hellraisers. And I start to go towards Banana. But again, Neo still holding a smoke can't really kind of underestimate just how important that $300 spend on a smoke grenade really can be because it just wastes so much time and Pasha's going to peek into Boiler there and pick up two kills on the Flamey and Doshio. Yes, this is only an eco around here for Hellraisers, but lovely accuracy with the Swag 7 in hand. In comes the push towards Banana though. They are going to get caught out as the TT players do rotate through mid. Adren's going to see if he can take out any passing CT players as he's the last one left alive, but it won't be successful and Virtus Pro put themselves into double figures here and this is the time now Hellraisers have got their AK-47 in hands and this is a pretty crucial round for them to take I believe in round number 19 because otherwise their money is really not going to be sitting too pretty whatsoever and Virtus Pro are going to start to run away. Interestingly it's a buy round now for the T team Virtus Pro know this however Neo still playing with the P90 something we have seen from Get Right in the past as well on some maps and uh, Pasha are going to be playing with the Mag 7 so I'm quite curious to see where these two guys are Neo going to be uh, causing shenanigans on the banana area with that P90. Meanwhile, Pasha is rotating from B, so we'll have to see where he ends up with that Mag-7. Could play Boiler with the Mag-7, but uh, normally he plays Arch. But it does have support from Snacks as well. I think he might play a bit of Speedway. But uh, Neo does have an aggressive position, but does not have any smokes. In fact, only Pasha has a smoke now. And as I say that, Neo, of course, whips out a smoke. So ignore me. <laughs> All the Ts, though, are pretty much Headed towards top mid, however, the bomb is still all the way down behind bottom mid, so all the options still open here for the T's. As uh, while the clock runs down for them, clock runs out on these counter smokes from Virtus Pro as well. Well, Angel's actually been able to wrap himself around towards Quaddy. He's going to get taken down there by, by Ali, so that's going to open things up here for the CT side. But Adren's made his way around there as well, but by the looks of things, they're just playing that lurker role and just seeing what they can do to try and distract those T players as the push comes in towards the B bomb site. So Neo with the P90 SMG is going to find one, but because he's been flashed, he didn't spot the first play in Doshia. So you will get picked out there to even things up into a three versus three T's with control of the B bomb site. And in comes the push here from the CTs just to try and retake this one. But the, uh, the T players of Hellraisers now have been able to get themselves into some good after plant positions. Indeed, it's a very long rotate from the Virtus Pro players only now arriving at the site. And you can see Hellraisers are well and truly into the uh, post plant position. So much so that they're kind of sinking into the couch right now. That said, Virtus Pro oh. just cleaning them what? up like it's nothing. Do they have enough time to defuse the bomb? Let's see. You can see... Uh, Snacks yeah, just stopping did. there because he didn't have a kit and a lots of time in the bag there for Taz to take it down with that diffuser. So, Hellraiser's had Heat and Potty set up. They had Banana as well, but things just uh, weren't to be. Virtus Pro said no and clean them all out. So, short pause incoming right now. Let's look at Virtus Pro. Very healthy on the money side of things. Once the buy comes out from the rest of the Hellraiser's team, they are going to have next to nothing in the bank. May have to go for uh, some of Chewie's giveaways and sell the uh, items for some cash. I love it. Boom! Pasha on 20 kills right now. Yeah, not far behind on 17. So uh, those two players doing quite well right now. Bayali doing well on this map compared to the previous one. Gone past his Dust 2 score already. In the meantime, things looking somewhat even on average across the Hell Razors team. So about to resume this match as Virtus Pro are five rounds away from taking map two and taking this best of three to three. And again, to spot out Snacks there, you know, we talked earlier on about how he'd only got about three frags at the time, I think it is, and he's moved himself up to eight. So he's got five frags in relative quick uh, succession there, just to even himself out, really, with the rest of the squad and put them all on relative level pegging in terms of the frags, which is certainly good. And there we go. The uh, pause will 
decline as we go into round number 20. 11-8 is your score as you do see. Virtus Pro looking very strong indeed. They've started to wipe away the uh, tears after losing the first map on Dust2, which was a score of 16 to 12 if you are just joining us in favor of Hellraisers. But here we go, anything can happen. We're not counting Hellraisers out of this one yet. It would be great if we saw this game go to Mirage because it's certainly been a close one so far. But Hellraisers can still do this, you know. Although they are a new lineup, they are a strong team from what we've seen so far. Indeed, and I think a, a, a map like Mirage, I would ve be very curious to see how Hellraisers go for that. Because, uh, again, without the uh, strong AWPers they've had in the past. Um, in fact, let's get back to it later. No nades whatsoever, no smokes oh. onto the truck or anything. They're just going to try and run out onto the balcony and it's not going to go their way. Taz isn't having any of it. Angel wondering what's going on. Looking a bit bemused, standing in second mid on his own. No bomb and uh, not much hope as he gets shot straight in the back of the head. And I mean, I have to say, that was like, uh, I guess they were trying to take Versus Pro by surprise because it's not often you have uh, four terrorists just walk straight through apps. Quite often, the person in second mid, you saw Angel was in second mid, the person in second mid often throws the smoke into truck here, uh, which blocks the vision of, from a lot of places of the apps. And uh, the T's just jump out. Both players don't really have um, great vision of it. So it can be a bit messy, but often the players jump, run through the smoke and jump into pit and try and take A from there, but they just brazenly, brazenly just walked through the apps, but uh, Taz wasn't sleeping and eliminated them. Well, they got punished for it, and Gliani's going to pick up three here. Will he get the fourth? Taz interrupts his uh, play and will get the fourth himself, leaving Adren the last one left alive with the bomb. Bayali will go down, but Taz finishes things off. So uh, 3k for Bayali, Taz with two to secure round. Number 13 here for Virtus Pro. And they are going to be able to rebuy here at Hellraisers, but Virtus Pro now, of course, only needing three single more rounds to be able to take map number two and force it into game three on Mirage. So we go into round number 22. It will be. Let's see where those ops are going. Pasha actually not deciding to stick with one at the second. So Kucha is going to be the man with the only one to start things off. And he's not looked like he's had too much information. But I really like, you know, just going back into that last round quickly. I like the way that Virtus Pro played it. Getting those incendiary grenades down. Just not letting Hellraisers push through aggressively on that eco to try and get some aggression down themselves. And that secured them the wrap. Look at this push here. We've got three. Well, we had three people on towards Banana, but we have the rotation from Pasha back over to A. So again, just going to secure B, uh, just in case there's a war of attrition down there, but it's going to be fairly quiet for the time being, as uh, Hellraisers are going to feel compelled to push towards the A bomb site. You can see Dozier just uh, staying bottom mid with the bomb for the time being, so as time passes on, they may choose to go back to B, as you can expect the CTs to potentially go to more passive positions. Snacks is going to re-smoke Banana though, and that's going to be a 20 second smoke and leave 25 seconds left in this round. So pretty much an A push coming in for Hellraisers. No one down for either team yet as the counter flashes start to come in as versus Pro know Hellraisers are running out of time here. Yep, they do indeed. And you can see actually that Snacks, I do believe, he's made his way over through Arch onto the A-bomb site as well. But look, the bomb is over towards Banana. And Neo in a very sneaky position here. He's going to find all the, seats, sorry, all the T players coming through, but he's only able to pick up one. Doshio responds, takes him out. And that's going to have to be a very quick retake coming in. They let go of Arch Control momentarily before Taz came and saved the day. Snacks shooting through the smokes, tries to get some players there with his M4. But the bomb will go down with six seconds left on the clock. Such a close round here. And it's back and forth left in a two versus three situation. Man advantage in favour of the CTs. Not anymore, though, according to Adren, as he takes down Pasha, leaving things onto a two-on-two. -on -two. Okay, let's see if Versus Pro can go for the retake here. They did it pretty cleanly last time, but they are a man down now with only Bayali remaining. He is behind the smoke as well. The clock is ticking down. He does have a kit, but he needs to get these kills and he needs to get them fast. Not going to get either of them. And that was a pretty crazy round there by yeah. Hellraisers. I mean, if you, if you look at the... The way both teams are thinking about that it was almost like an episode of Death Note where they're just trying to continuously um, just outsmart each other. Hellraisers knew that they could only push the A bomb site because that smoke left them with so little time to A clear banana, B clear the choke point at near B, and, cl and then clear B itself and then plant the bomb. But they went for it anyway and managed to get the bomb down. So, uh, I mean, quite entertaining to watch there. Pasha going to rip Kucha's face off. So that's not going to go Hellraiser's way. Two-man disadvantage now as Banana is once again in control of Versus Pro. Bomb is still in the hands of Hellraiser's though, so at least that's something. But they're going to have to find some frags here as Snacks gets even more aggressive. 
Wow, I'm loving this position, and I'm sure Flamey wasn't expecting him to come through there, as he will take him out, leaving things on a five versus two. So Verdes Pro realizing how slow Hellraiser took it in round number 22 before their eventual, I think it was about 20 seconds it took them to get down Banana onto the B-bomb site and plant the bomb down with only about six seconds left in the round. But Verdes Pro realizing that that could be the name of the game here, the Snacks will find a Dren there in t to shut him down, leaving Angel. The last one left alive, Verdes Pro with a very aggressive pursuit on the TV side, and it's worked for them securing their 14th round, leaving them with only two more rounds in hand to win before forcing this into game number three on Mirage. When you get shot in the, an open door in t from the middle of second mid by a CT, you know things are not going your way. Yeah, pretty Inferno. much. Snacks is still rolling with the P90 here. I hope it's a death by Kitty at least. Okay, and that's <laughs> what happens with Go TV lag. <laughs> So come on, take that one for us. Yeah, today. exactly. Yeah, that was a difficult one indeed. <laughs> Not quite sure what happened there. He suddenly just disappeared off our screen. Moment of silence, unfortunately. But Kutcher will go down. And Verdus Pro are on map point. They've started to really improve their game. And yeah, I can't kind of get over it. I love it when, although it's annoying when GoTV has moments like that, it is quite funny. When 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 you just get a top-down view of someone's... I, th I thought he just killed himself in console or something. Yeah, right. And you're like, hold on, like five people are dead. What What is going on here? Well, round number 25 it is, and it's going to be a, a pretty awkward force by here. Neo's going to start things off with the AWP frag onto Doshia to start things off there, and they've got a double AWP set up. Yep, Neo over towards Banana gets one to start things off, and Pasha over towards A as well. They've let complete go of Arch control, but it's not really going to matter too much because that bomb is stacked at the top of Banana here. But, I mean, Virtus Pro really, they've stepped up their game. This is the Virtus Pro we're used to seeing now after their... Uh, uh, Really horrible start to the T side on Dust2 earlier on, which we won't mention anymore because they've got past that now. Indeed, you can see Adren throwing a smoke, I think, into Arch there. But as you mentioned, the three CT players on the A side are all over the quad area. So we've got an aggressive position in Boiler, which may take Adren by surprise, and indeed it will with Taz taking him out immediately. And it's going to be only Kucha left to try and salvage this for the Hellraiser's team. He can't do it. It's going to be 69 to Virtus Pro on Inferno. And we are going to go through.